Okay, uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is the regular meeting, uh, May meeting of the um, Advisory Panel on Racial Disparities in the Criminal and Juvenile Justice Systems. Um, we uh, let us start with the introductions. I will go around my screen, and if you would please do a brief introduction when I call your name, that would be great. Um, Julio. Hi, uh, Julio Thompson, uh, Attorney General's Office, Civil Rights Unit. Thank you. The next person is a number, and it is so small, I doubt I'll be able to read it. 802. Five zero five nine one four seven. Hi, it's Robin from Crime Research. Oh, hi, Robin. Hi, Judge Greer. <laughs> Judge Grierson. Yep, Brian Grierson, Chief uh, Superior Judge. Welcome or good evening, everyone. Uh, Professor Crocker. Hi, I'm Abby Crocker I'm at the University of Vermont and the National Center on Restorative Justice. Thank you. Loretta Saki. Hi, I'm Loretta Saki from the Council of State Governments Justice Center. Thank you. And another phone number, 80222. Oh, dear God. Ah. Uh, 802 -272 Hi, this is uh, Judge Davenport. Hi, Judge Davenport. Jeff Jones. Hi, Jeff Jones. Um, at large, uh, state's attorney's appointment. Monica Weber. Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Weber, and I'm the commissioner um, designee from the Department of Corrections. Karen Gannett. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Gannett. I'm the executive director of Crime Research Group. Jessica Brown. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Brown. My pronouns are she and her, and I am the supervising attorney at the Chittenden County Public Defender Office, and I am appointed to the panel by the Attorney General's Office. Thanks. Sarah Friedman. Hi, everyone. Sarah Friedman with the Council of State Governments Justice Center. Great. Susanna Davis. Hi, Susanna Davis, Racial Equity Director. Thank you. Sheila Linton. Sheila Linton, she, her pronouns, uh, appointed by Attorney General, panel member, and representing the Root Social Justice Center. Rebecca Turner. Hi, everyone. Rebecca Turner, uh, panel member, Defender General's designee. And um, hey, Tan, did you see Sheila's uh, comment in the chat asking? No, I don't have the chat this? up. I'm sorry. I'm doing five other things right now. Yeah, she was uh, just asking if it's record. If this is being recorded. Yes, it is. Yes, oh, it is. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Tyler Allen. Good evening, everyone. Tyler Allen. I'm the Department for Children and Families designee. Chris Loris. Hey, uh, Christopher Loris, Research Associate with Crime Research Group. Representative Lalonde. Sorry, slow uh, to the draw there. Martin Lalonde uh, on the Judiciary House Judiciary Committee. Uh, just sitting in to, to watch what's going on. Thanks. Uh, Elizabeth Morris. Hello, uh, Elizabeth Morris. I'm the Juvenile Justice Coordinator for DCF, and I am just here as a member of the public. Great. Captain Scribner. 
Hi, I am Captain Julie Scribner, Vermont State Police. I am here as the designee for Commissioner Sherling, Department of Public Safety. Great. David Scher. Hi, everybody. David Scher, Assistant Attorney General, he, him pronouns, representing the Attorney General's office. Thank you. Chief Stevens. Uh, Don Stevens, uh, Chief of the Nohegan Abenaki Tribe. Great. And last but not least, I want to introduce someone I did not get to introduce last week because of time and the fact that I was very scattered. Um, and that would be Evan Meenan, who is our new representative from the, what is it? Is it the Department or the Office of States Attorneys and Sheriffs? Evan. The uh, Department of States Attorneys and Sheriffs. And good evening, everybody. And he will be uh, the new designate from that area because, um, as we all know, um, James Pepper has gone on to the cannabis, what is it, Cannabis Control Board, I believe. So that is sort of an announcement and sort of an introduction. I'm Eitan Nasred and Longo. I chair the panel, he, him, pronouns, and... Um, appointed by the Attorney General. Um, can we move on to the minutes, please? We have two sets of minutes. We have, first of all, the one from the 13th of April. Um, and then secondly, the ones from last week from our special meeting on the 4th of May. Let's start with the 13th of April. Are there any corrections, errata, uh, you know, things of that nature that people want to um, bring up that we need to look at. I'm looking for hands. Okay. Um, oh, Sheila, I see you now. <laughs> Thanks, Aton. I just wanted to say that specifically something that I was quoted in here about um, highlighting the visu uh, visual representation, I specifically was asking about the branches in the government. And so I just wanted that to be specifically highlighted because that was what I was really speaking to of what branches exist in the government and where we would put those things in and um, what does it really mean for them to be in that branch was really Great. what I was communicating. Thank you. David, do you have that since I don't see Olivia? I don't. I will. I guess I yes, I have it. I'll be taking minutes today. and I just noted down that correction. And okay. uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'll, and move, I, I'll move that yeah. we adopt them. Adopt the minutes Great. of the April meeting. Anyone seconding? I can second. second. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstentions? Motion's carried. We approve the minutes from the 13th of April. Let's turn our attentions to the minutes of last week, the 4th of May. Corrections, uh, amendments. Sheila. Um, just the correction of the clarification that we, um, I think Rebecca originally named it as a study group, but then we agreed that it was a working group, but it's not clear. And I, I just wanted to, I guess it's a question and a statement if that's what we mean by study group and working group is how we change the language. And if so, if the minutes could actually reflect that so it's not, people are not thinking that those are two separate entities that we're talking about. Great point, thank you. I think we were, that that was a change that we had decided it was not a study group, that that was a misspoken term and that we were going with working groups. So, David, can you? Yeah, I'll correct it. I think at the moment it was said it was study group and then it later got changed. So I think the minutes accurately reflected that. Oh, but I okay. take the point that now looking back at it, it's confusing. So I think it's fair to correct, um, to, to have it consistent in the document. Okay. I remembered there being a moment, but. Or maybe. just to convey that that's what took place. 
it just is not clear that that took place. So that's fine that it says study group and then working group. It just is not clear that that was changed. That makes sense. I will I will add that in to reflect that change clearly. Great, thank you. Uh, any other corrections? Okay, we need a motion. I'll move the adoption. I'll thank you. Thank you. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Please say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstentions? Motions carried. We approve both minutes um, of the 13th of April's meeting and 4th of May. Um, announcements? Any announcements? All right. The one that I have to make is uh, Judge Grierson has to leave early. And I also think, given the draft that I was sent by um, Representative Christie at about 4.30, 4.40 this afternoon, um, that is more proximate in terms of our work, in terms of what needs to get done more quickly. Um, I think the first issue is something that is going to go on um, for a lot longer than this meeting, whereas talking about the proposed working group needs to happen very quickly. So I want to switch the two items on the agenda um, and begin with the discussion of the proposed working group. Um, you all have that. I sent it to you, as I said, around 440 this afternoon. Um, that's the only announcement I have. Okay, having said that and seeing no one else's hand up, um, I'd like to move on to the discussion of the proposed working group. I hope you have had a chance to look over Representative Christie's um, email to us. Um, Susanna Davis has noted on page two, just a couple of small points. Um, on line one, the inserting of the word of, in fact, um, after the, for purposes of developing the report required by subsection A. The other point that she made concerns with line nine, that the chief performance officer is retiring on the 21st of May, so in other words, a week from Friday, and there's some uncertainty as to who will be taking that role over and so on. So th that's something that she will look into and I will keep in touch with her about that. So those are just two points that need to be made. Um, I think the other point, and Professor Crocker, if you can help me on this, um, page two, um, we're asked, the, this working group of the RDAP is asked to consult with A, um, that's line four, the Vermont Crime Research Group, line five, B, the National Center on Restorative Justice. If I take this, um, an email I received, I, mostly from Bobby Sand correctly, that should be struck and it should be directly with both you and he. Is that correct? Yeah, that'll just help avoid any issues with the the center funder. Okay, so we will uh, suggest that it is uh, Professor Abigail Crocker and UVM and Robert Sand VLS. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and those are the comments that I wanted to start off with, and otherwise I wanted to open this up to a general conversation. I'm hoping you all have had time to read it. Should I don't know, David, is this the moment when someone should do a read through? I'm certainly not skilled with that sort of thing. Eric Fitzpatrick does it rather elegantly, but. Um, I think that would be reasonable. I don't know if I don't want to volunteer people, except I'm going to try to do it anyway right now. If if Representative Lalonde is on and listening, 
he might be the person best placed to walk us through this. So I take it uh, Representative Christie's not here? I don't see him. I sent him the link, but I, I don't see him. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to bring it up right now, and I'm happy to do so, but you're going to have to bear with me for one moment. Sure. For me to find the dot. Here we go. No, I'm looking at the wrong document. I apologize. It says at the top general number three, five, six, two, four, two. Yeah, no, I've, I've uh, printed okay. it off. I've looked at it and I've just uh, have it right here in my hand right now. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, so so the, the idea of this, uh, of this proposal is, is rather than creating a, a different working group, it, it would be assigning the already in existence RDAP, which we have another bill which will extend the life of RDAP, uh, but it, it is assigning uh, the task uh, to this uh, existing group, which makes this a lot easier to, to get through this late in the session. <clears throat> so that's that's really the, the construct of this uh, of the whole bill. Um, so it's asking for a report. It's in, and the date is November fifteenth, and the reason for the report coming uh, at that uh, seemingly long way off, but not, uh, is that the Senate's um, deadline for uh, bill requests, uh, drafting requests, is the first of December, and uh, Senator Sears would want to see uh, whatever comes out of this uh, effort uh, in time to actually make sure that a request goes into our legislative council uh, for a bill based on the work. So the, uh, the next section or the next bit of the bill uh, is, is talking about what the scope of the work is supposed to, to be. And, and that is taken actually right out of uh, uh, an email that we received from uh, Rebecca Turner. Uh, I think actually that coach may have received it from Rebecca Turner and uh, had our legislative council uh, that would be uh, going on to. Uh, um, yes. Hold on one moment. There's a horrible feedback coming through here. Can people mute if they're not speaking, please? Let's just. Okay, let's try it again. Sorry, Representative. And, and I can, I can, so why don't I just walk through what those uh, points are? And that's usually what our uh, is gives you that kind of detail. Uh, so the, the report is supposed to address uh, where the Bureau should be situated, which is something we've been talking a lot about. I know that uh, RDAP has. Uh, taking into account the necessity for the independence and the advantage advantages and disadvantages of being a standalone or independent body or being housed in, in state government, <clears throat> how and to what extent the Bureau should be staffed, what should be the scope of the Bureau's mission, how the Bureau should conduct data collection and analysis, and the best methods for the Bureau to enforce its data collection and analysis. So that is a pretty broad scope, obviously. Uh, but it's building on the work that uh, RDAP certainly has been involved in the last two years. Uh, so hopefully some of those, uh, it's revisiting ground that you've been uh, trotting for the last couple of years. Uh, the next part uh, talks about who uh, the uh, RDAP should consult with. This is probably not necessary, at least uh, the B1 is probably not necessary because of course you can consult with anybody you want but I think putting it in the bill is helpful uh, uh, to kind of point the direction for uh, folks who are looking at this bill. Uh, the B2 though is actually uh, a little more forceful. It is not only saying to consult with, but to have the assistance of. So we are essentially uh, mandating or, or the administration to offer the assistance of uh, the Vermont Chief Performance Officer and the Vermont Ch uh, Chief Data Officer. 
So it also explains that uh, in subsection B that the report should include draft legislation. Uh, I really like to have that kind of thing in these reports because uh, too many reports are looked at and are perhaps read and then set aside. Uh, but when we actually ask for draft legislation, I think that really helps. Uh, just like I think the last report uh, really offered a path for us to uh, proceed in the in the legislature with the uh, language that ended up in in H317. Uh, <clears throat> so the members of the panel, the last couple uh, sections, talk about the the members of the panel uh, who are not otherwise state employees uh, being able to receive a per diem. And then the section E uh, is seeking an appropriation of $50,000 uh, for the office of the attorney general to, uh, to have some control over because they are uh, the entity under which RDAP has been formed. Uh, to complete, and, and it's fairly broad, it says to complete the work described in this section, uh, which can include uh, money being used for the University of Vermont legislative and internship program uh, that probably was not completely necessary to have that language in there because, uh, but it, it's contemplated that if there's uh, additional work that needs to be done outside the purview of RDAP, if, if there's a need for assistance, uh, this would provide some funding. So. I do have one big question that hopefully somebody might be able to answer uh, this evening. And that is if anybody has any further justification for that particular figure that I picked out of the air uh, a week ago. And if, if there's uh, some concept that getting some uh, consultant to help uh, would cost in the range of up to $50,000 if anybody has any kind of clue on that or could help. And the reason I'm asking is this would help uh, Representative Christie and I uh, to sell this concept of the appropriation to our appropriations committee. Uh, they usually don't just give us money because we say it's a good idea. Uh, we actually have to provide as much support as we can uh, to yeah, you know, and if we don't, we'll we'll do our best. Um, but that's it. I'm happy to try to answer questions. Although this uh, did come really primarily from uh, uh, Representative Christie, uh, but uh, but I have been uh, helping out a bit. Great, thank you. Um, this is the part where we have at it. All right, let me start then. <laughs> um, one of the issues that I have is I appreciate that November 15th is put forth for the benefit of legislative council um, and another for them to work on the bill, but I or the bill that we hope will come out of this um, working group. I also have to say I feel like they need to be involved with the working group as it goes on. I think bringing giving them work at the end is I, particularly since this is quite clear about providing um, draft legislation. And I think I, I kind of I mean it says the report required by subsection A of this section shall include proposed draft legislation. I want the people who do that there. So if I could comment on that, uh, I'm, sure. I'm not. We can't we can't dedicate from my understanding and I can double check and look into this. Uh, we can't assign a legislative council uh, to to a working group or to an entity such as RDAP. And if, if, it, if we were creating a working group that uh, had legislators involved uh, or was primarily you know, a legislative working group, then we can. Uh, but having said that, uh, certainly uh, 
the representatives who are working on these issues, like uh, Representative Christie and I, uh, we, we have uh, entree into the Legislative Council throughout the year. And uh, although the Legislative Council could not work directly for uh, RDAP, you know, they, they do work for the legislators. And, and I would assume that Coach and I will be following uh, the work and, and can do that. And of course, we have some very good attorneys who do a lot of good drafting for us uh, in David Shear, for instance. Uh, uh, so he volunteered me for something. I'll volunteer him right back. <laughs> David's smile is somewhat distressing, but yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Evan. Um, yeah, I, I had a, I had a somewhat related concern to yours, Eitan, and, and I, I think uh, I think that if we knew what type of legislative bill proposal we wanted to put forward, I think there are some folks uh, who on, on in this group that could help with the drafting. Don't worry, David. I'm I can help you with that if. Uh, if you get dinged with that task, but I had a different concern related to the request for proposed draft legislation. If this gets passed, this version of H317 gets passed later this month, we'll have roughly six months to, to accomplish this task. And just earlier today, I was reading the report that this group issued in December, on December 1st of 2020. And it seems like what this draft of H317 would require us to do is what we refrain from doing in that report. I think in that report, we, the group even specifically recognized that its expertise fell short of how to actually perform this type of data collection and analysis. So while I certainly appreciate that there's folks in the state like the Crime Research Group and the University of Vermont and, uh, you know, professors Sand and Crocker that, that whose expertise exceeds mine, uh, having just read that report, I'm a little concerned about our ability to to now put forward draft legislation in six months when it seems like the group wasn't able to do that at the time it issued its December report. Um, and since I'm new, maybe maybe those concerns are not valid or they've been ameliorated in some way, but that, that was my concern when I saw this request for draft legislation. Rebecca. Thanks, Evan, for um, your, your comments and welcome to the panel. Uh, looking forward to working with you on this project. Uh, so you're right in terms of that report was written basically confirming that we had reached our max um, expertise on this subject, and here you go. What's different about this version, what's critically different, is where I see the language suggesting, well, no, providing for, uh, both with the financial numbers and listing the experts that are available to us to consult and the, those who must consult or with us and provide support. We didn't have that. Uh, and, and to the level and degree that we would need, uh, we didn't have that available at the time we were doing the report. We were at a different stage. So it's the next step, and I certainly, I certainly agree. Like I certainly, I haven't gained any additional expertise in this area except for, you know, yet more months on, on, in this in this topic and debating it and 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 talking with others on this panel and uh, about this project but it is truly i look forward to and um to learning from and hearing from these experts who I, who i and this panel have gotten to know over the months and and that's why they were identified in this bill or because we saw them as the experts who could get us there i do think that 6 months is ambitious but doable. I appreciate what Senator Sears um, is doing with that date. I think that that indicates that the legislature is serious and we need to get this before them at the beginning of the session to give this the maximum chance of actually passing next session. Um, 
I, I, I feel pretty comfortable with what I'm seeing there, uh, short of what Representative Lolong just uh, invited from us here tonight, which is to supplement the figure, the number, the financial figure uh, with something higher if, if we can show a need for it. But otherwise, I feel comfortable with how this is drafted. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I, I guess one of the things I would want to check in about here, uh, I guess crime research group, Karen, Robin, are you all on board with this? Hi, Etan. Um, I actually think a working group is a good idea to kind of okay. figure this out and walk through what needs to be done. Um, there are long lists of data in that bill, all coming from different sources. Um, I've had some ideas about potentially doing some data mapping and figuring out where the data live, if they're available, where we can get it. and. So I think some of this is, I think it's, yeah, I think it's the right way to go. I think it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted, I mean, we, I just wanted to check in. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Professor Thanks for checking Crocker. In. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Professor Crocker. I, I just, I was just going to send Martin an email, but I thought I would just put the chat here. Martin had just asked for um, ideas or thoughts for where that, that um, that sum of money could come from. And a, a few years ago, I had um, worked with an organization um, at, at the University of Pennsylvania that was really, really helpful in navigating, like accessing state data systems for systems like that are non-operations reasons. Um, and so I just put the link to the to that group in the chat. Um, and they offer like training and consultation services for setting up these kinds of systems. So it's just a potential resource um, that might help the working group um, and might help add some context to those figures. Great, thank you. And thank you for putting that in the chat. Um, I kind there's, I, oh, okay, hold on, Tyler. Hi, I, I might I might need a little catch up here because I'm not so deep <laughs> into this group, but my understanding is when we were crafting the report last December that we were saying our group was lacking in its in its in terms of resources and capacity to actually do the analysis of the data that we had described needing. Um, and it seems to me that this piece of legislation is more about our feedback in developing the bureau that would be responsible for running that analysis of it. Am, am I am I missing a piece in there? It, it feels like this is a different task than the report that we were unable to complete last year. Well, I guess I'm not sure we were unable to complete it. I think we did we did the scope of work in that until it got to collecting data, at which point we were a little bewildered that we were even asked that. Um, but otherwise, I think it's there. I think this is asked, we, out of that report came the idea of the Bureau, and we're now being asked for some further clarification on where that might go with the help of these other experts that we did not have the first time around. Okay, and I apologize. I didn't mean to suggest we weren't unable, we were unable to complete. I, I recognize we did the task that was asked of us, but it seemed to me that at that time we were thinking about how, who's gonna run the analysis of this. And the Bureau is what would be running the analysis of these data, right? Sure. Do I have that yeah. right? Okay. Yes. And this is about asking us for feedback on how that bureau, where it should be housed, and what it, how it should be constructed, right? Right. At least as far as I'm reading it. <laughs> okay. 
Just making sure I had it right in my mind. Thank okay. you, Aton. I'll confirm that that is the intention of, of this bill. So thank you. Monica. Thanks, Aton. And I think, um, Tyler, that your question sort of, you know, made me think a little bit about another question because in number four about what our task is, it's sort of we're supposed to actually give a recommendation about how the Bureau should conduct data collection and analysis, mm -hmm. which is different than what should the Bureau be, um, what's, what's its scope, where should it be housed? I think those are two important questions, and I think people with different skill sets may also be able to answer those questions because on one hand, it's a very, there's some bureaucratic state things that need to be taken care of in terms of administration, where do you put a bureau, how do you hire people, you know, all that kind of stuff. Then there is the work of what the bureau should do. Um, and I know I've said this before and maybe I'm just stuck on it. And if, if I am, that's fine. People can tell me to not get stuck on it. But I really am not sure that the word collect should be the right word. I don't know that the Bureau collects anything. The Bureau will be a repository. Data will come into the Bureau from various places. And that Bureau needs to be able to aggregate it, to analyze it, to you know sort it out, um, and then spit it back out to people unless I'm thinking about the Bureau very wrong, but I don't think about the Bureau as being a primary place where data will be collected. Okay. David, please note that carefully, if you would. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, got it. Which I also think is why it's important to have um, the chief data officer, because even if, you know, we decided, okay, maybe this, if, I don't necessarily think ADS is the place where this bureau should live, but no matter what, if state of Vermont entities are going to be sharing data, the agency of digital services has to be involved in some way or, or another. Right. Okay. Um, let me take things a little out of order here because I know he has to go early. Judge Grierson. Tom, um, I don't want to oversimplify it, but this bill, the way it reads now, it seems consistent with the discussion we had a week ago um, in, in our response to what that bill looked like. And when I look at, and it's been a while, I would agree, Evan, that, that since I looked at our, our report, this seems like the logical next step uh, in this process, that even though we were lim we indicated we were limited or we'd gone as far as we could um, with the old report. This one, I think, recognizes the limitations, our limitations that we had identified, and they're trying. It appears that they're trying to build on that. Um, right. Right. And and I think that's the whole purpose of the of, of the working group. And I would agree with with Monica about collection. But when I look at Number three, just above that, what should be the scope of the Bureau's mission? I think that's where we have the opportunity to, to talk about what we see as, the, as the, the Bureau's work, as opposed to, um, are, they going, are we going to be a collection agency? We're probably not, but that's where we can define what the scope of the Bureau's work will be. I, I think by the addition of the, of the, uh, folks to provide that information, I, I think it gives us the framework to, right. to take the next step. And I, I, unless we can think of other entities that we would want to be involved in, I, I think this provides an outline. Um, I still think it's quite, I think it's quite an undertaking, as I said last week. I mean, this is really, um, putting the flesh on the skeleton of our report. And, you know, it's going to be a big lift. There's no question in terms of the time frame, the six months and what we're expected to do, but I think it really is the next next logical step. So um, I, I, I certainly, if I have to leave before you make a, a vote, I, I certainly would support this, this bill, or, or at least the judiciary believes this is a, a way to proceed. 
Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chief Stevens. Um, one question I had about the bill, I didn't see anything involving authority. Because one of the things that we had talked about was um, what authority someone might have to collect data that they may need or that doesn't exist or, you know, or creating some kind of mechanism to be able to collect, to be able to gather that information. Is that, should that be, should their authority be part of this bill or should that be part of the recommendation of what the Bureau has the authority to do, not just to collect, but to also, um, you know, be able to to have those departments make changes so that way they can collect the data needed. I, I, I'm just asking the question because I didn't see anything about the Bureau having the authority to do X, Y, and Z. Um, anyway, I just wanted to ask if that's an issue or is that later on? Uh, Aton, can I respond to yeah, that? Yeah, go ahead. I thought you were getting yeah. there, yes. Yeah. I, I think that might be covered in the subsection five. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken. That says the best methods for the Bureau to enforce its data collection and analysis responsibilities. I think that was at least the intent of, of that particular subsection. If you don't think that that does it, we can certainly add uh, an additional item uh, if you have a, a suggestion. But I think that that was aimed for that. And if I could just make address a couple of things that I heard from a couple other individuals. There seemed to be some about subsection four and five. Uh, and uh, we could actually uh, cha change this a little bit so that those two sections that, that the report may also include uh, these two sections. You know, the first three are shell, those last two are may, that gives some discretion for RDAP uh, to decide whether it's appropriate once they get into, for instance, number three, which is the mission, uh, and and you know number one where it is, uh, they they may not want to, or our may not want to go that next step, but they may may want to. So I just want to throw that out there as as a possibility to address those couple concerns I heard. Uh, I believe uh, so. Anyway, sorry to butt in, but no, it's okay. I am. Um... Hold on, I'm, uh, folks, you're all texting and emailing at the same time. I'm one person, you're 20. It's got, it's going to take a moment here. Sorry, got to say it. Uh, Evan. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to chime in real quickly and say that, that I, I, I do agree with Judge Grierson that this proposal is in line with what we discussed last session and or last meeting, and it does appear to be the next logical step. Um, and, and, and I did want to um, recognize the distinction that, that Tyler put forward about the difference between actually doing the data analysis and making a recommendation for how the data analysis should be conducted. And, and I think that Monica is correct that number four there on page one line 19 gets to the heart of that. I think the concern that I was trying to raise was if we don't have the expertise to do the analysis, how do we know the best way it should be done? But that said, if, um, if, if we have the ability to identify the folks with that expertise, and if those folks are willing to help us, um, either through the allocation of this $50,000 or through their, their uh, generous spirits, then, then I, think that, I think this proposal is, is a good one. Um, and in terms of the $50,000, I, un I unfortunately don't have a recommendation for whether or not that's an appropriate figure or if it should be higher or lower and would likely defer to others who have some experience in, uh, in, in finding money to accomplish similar objectives. Okay. Thank you. Representative Christie. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry I joined you a little late was in another meeting, um, but I uh, did uh, 
listen to the conversation. Um, and what's interesting to me is uh, I think Judge Grierson uh, nailed it uh, as far as where we're at. Uh, based on the special meeting, you know, last week, uh, the question was put before us, next steps. So uh, Martin, uh, myself, um, Chairman Grad, uh, and Eric Fitzpatrick, who is our attorney, uh, took to the best of our ability the notes from that meeting and constructed this amendment to the bill in such a way that it could be added to the miscellaneous judiciary bill, which would be transversing, transversing between the House and the Senate in order to get across the finish line. Uh, and it looks like the impending finish line is the 22nd. Uh, that's the other meeting I was at. So uh, we have these other inertia factors going on, but I think, you know, like Tyler's question and what Evan spoke to and even what Monica spoke to, I heard a really interesting quote uh, a couple of weeks ago about data and it was referred to as when you mentioned repository they called it a data lake you know and think of being able to extract whatever you're fishing for so you know if you want to get bass you got to use a certain lure you know if you want to get uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, stripers, you got to get another, you know, I mean, whatever it is you're, you're looking for, it's the tool. So I'm a metaphor guy, so I, I can't help that. But the, the big point is, and, and I think Martin, um, you know, also went to the, uh, uh, the response. Uh, we're in that, that space where we can adjust where we need to, uh, to get this, you know, ready for prime time, so to speak. Um, the the other pieces that we talked about last week uh, were we have some incredible resources available to us collectively, uh, and the fact that we all want this to be what we want it to be, which is the best we can for Vermont. You know that that's the goal. And as long as we continue to work in that way, you know, we'll get done what we need to get done. So I, I'm just really grateful for everybody here and thank you all for standing up. David, if you can, if for a moment here, um, housekeeping, apparently Judge Davenport is somehow off the meeting. Can you get her back in? I can't seem to do it. Just thank you. if you can. Thank sure. you. I'm... Oh, I think Judge Davenport, Davenport just spoke oh, up. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank mind. you. I'm, I... I'm no, I'm listening by phone, but I, I'm not in the. I can't seem to get into the meeting, but that's all right. I can. I can listen by phone. Fine. Thanks so much. Sorry. Sure. Okay. Any other commentary here, uh, Sheila? Hey, I just wanted to understand about the differences between the $50,000 and the per diems and whether the $50,000 includes the per diems. And my other question to that is my understanding of per diem is like um, $50 a day or something in mileage. And I'm wondering if people feel like that's equitable um, compensation for those who are not being compensated by their work or through the state. My immediate response would be no, <laughs> as, as far as it being uh, adequate. Um, when we uh, did the working group uh, last fall with the Social Equity Caucus, we kind of flipped that paradigm on its head and said, let's be a little more reasonable. So we went with a, uh, it broke down to 180 something dollars uh, per meeting uh, and it also helped us be able to uh, generate a little extra 
uh, to ensure that we had the administrative support necessary to move the project along as well. Uh, because our original budget for that particular activity uh, started at 200. Uh, so by just agreeing to modify the number down slightly to that 180 number, it created enough uh, extra uh, funding so that we were able to actually uh, get extra intern supports uh, for the working group. Um, so uh, it's, I think, well, no, I don't think, you know, we just need to keep uh, shifting, you know, this bubble uh, because that's how we're going to really get to the change point. Can we shift that now? Mm -hmm. Can we shift that now? We already did. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, we're, this isn't, this is the way we've done it, and Martin and I were both part of that. Uh, well, so, what, what I mean is, can we shift that on this bill and this amendment? Looking at this and what we're doing, it's the, the question. One of the questions around what people are asking is around how that money is allocated, and I'm not uh, totally sure, um, like what the positions would be or whom we would need to be able to come in. And I don't even know with the players that are mentioned, do we compensate them or if because they're with the state or they're with this okay. agency they're already paid for? These are questions I don't I don't understand. So when we're asked okay. where the thousand is allocated, I'm not sure if I can even answer that question. Okay, let me let me try to help with that answer, if I may. Uh, what we would be suggesting uh, because there's a lot of uh, uh, autonomy. Uh, with RDAP uh, in the way we've word, worded this uh, as far as what you need for additional supports. But the question becomes the number of people on the working group. Uh, we, we were operating with for 14 community members over a directed six two hour meeting format. And those six meetings were allocated the $180 per member during that period of time. Wait, coach, I'm confused. This is the format you're describing is for this working group or this yeah. is okay yeah. six meetings you know two uh, hours of meeting. oh. you know it, it, this is this is a suggestion i'm not you, you know that's you know your autonomous piece but uh, if if you use that as a let's say a guidepost because that's you, you know we have an example a working example that worked you know, we produced a 62 page report, you know, as a result of that work using that format. Uh, and so I'm, I'm just sharing that experience with you, uh, not to say it has to be locked down, but at the same time, I can tell you that if you used a format similar to that and you had, you know, 10, um, uh, community members, let's say, that budget more is more than adequate to cover that. Okay, and, and that I know for a fact. I'm not just, you know, throwing, you know, numbers out because uh, uh, that's where it is. So that's, um, you know, that's th that round number gives a lot of discretion, you know, to uh, your committee, which is RDAP, to determine, you know, what's needed for that work. You you might, you know, push it out to maybe eight meetings between now and then, you know, because there is life that goes on in between all of this as well, you know. So um, that's just some thoughts. I did quick math and if it's six times two which is 12 right 
times how many meetings? No, it was six meetings, two hours times, no, six, ah, I'm all confused, never mind. <laughs> six times 14 community members times 180. comes to 15,000. Mm. Yeah. And we don't have that many. That was Monica. my point. Right, <laughs> thank you. Monica. I, I think you just answered my question because I was like, why are we using the 14 figure? But we're just using as, because um, there right. aren't 14 community members on our panel, but. Correct. That's why I just said that 15,000. Yeah. It's actually 15,120. It, and that's Thank you for that clarification. Yes. The, right. Um, and then we Sheila, could use the money for other purposes. Right. Sheila, does that help? Um, I think that what I understood from this conversation is, is that there's a pool of money that if we decide on this agreement, that we have the discretion and how to spend that, which includes we could compensate those at large members at whatever the group and body decides. Is that basically what just happened? I I would like to suggest, okay, uh, and, and you notice that I, I don't get emphatic that often about things, but, but this particular one, uh, in order to help the paradigm shift that we're working on is if we thought in terms of 200, 180 to $200, use that number because it, we're hoping to be able to replicate this more times in other activities. So having a fixed number would be appropriate. Uh, that's what we used uh, last fall uh, and it was, what, three times more than normal? Um, so if if you look at that as a number, you know, it's saying that you as an organization and a group feel strongly about the value of your community members and their time. And, and that was the statement we were trying to make last fall. Okay. And that is the statement that I'm trying to make right now. So thank you. <laughs> okay. No, I, I I could tell, sister. You know, you 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 were there. <laughs> but okay. you know that. But that gives you know us collectively, you know, even as legislators, administrators, all of the different hats that we wear, to be able to say this is a reasonable number. You know, um, those of us that have done honorariums for different presentations, you know. You know, when you get that, you know, two hundred dollar check, you just kind of go, "Wow, that's really cool," you know. Um, so, in in that, just says people, you know, appreciate you and what you bring to the table. So, hopefully, that's helpful. I wanted also in this to point. I have an email that I have to send um, around to everyone from both Dr. Crocker and Professor Sand having to do with their participation. And this important point on this is that they feel that for their expertise, perhaps, I know this is a quote, 25,000 would suffice, which might never be spent. And there's a whole long um, explanation about why that might be the way it goes. Um, I will send that out. But even so, we're still under, we're under 50, um, which means we can really, first of all, bring in other people and pay them in a way that isn't sort of insulting. And we can do the same with the community members that are on the panel. Um, can I just say one thing? Sorry, I just wanted to follow up on that email in that I think what we meant to say in that email was, uh -oh. uh, no, was, was that uh, if we'd love to be involved um, without compensation. Like we, the $25,000 was not for us. It was like, maybe you need $25,000 for some of these other things. 
Um, so well, thank you. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I got that, that really wrong. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> uh, Monica. Well, I, I think Abby just probably clarified the question I had because then I was like, oh, well, if we're going to pay someone $25,000, then don't we have to get into like contracting for things? But if we don't need to do that, which I hope we can avoid, then no worries. <laughs> And I also okay. support um, having 100 and, or 180, 200, whatever the amount is for our um, at-large panel members to participate in meetings. Uh, yeah. And if we need to make that change in this bill, I think that would be really helpful. Right. Evan? I, I figured I might as well chime in on this $50 per diem while I had two representatives willing to listen to me because I can tell you having come from the Natural Resources Board, which administers the Act 250 program and has many, many volunteers who spend a lot of time uh, working for the state, that there's been a, a many conversations, not just in this context, where uh, the, the sufficiency of the $50 per diem for people who lend their, lend their time to the state of Vermont uh, might, might not be enough. And so, um, you know, I, I would agree that that fifty dollars for doing important work like this, um, you know, could, could be improved in, in general, but also in the context of this working group, I, I don't anticipate the department would object to giving folks willing to volunteer their time more than fifty bucks a day. David, I'm you've been tracking all of the little these changes that we've been discussing, yes, in this bill. Yep, <clears throat> I've got it down. And this this discussion in particular, uh, certainly in agreement with it. I think it might require a little language tweak, but uh, that's not hard hard to do. I think we can embody the the intent here pretty easily. Okay, Co um, Coach and um, Representative Lalonde, what what is when do you need this back with our comments? My my immediate response would be uh, as soon as possible, obviously. Got it. Uh, okay. But as far as uh, the uh, uh, the detail uh, pieces, um, you know, we we'd need to talk with uh, uh, ledge council about that language piece, uh, David. You know, as far as some of the the detail pieces. Uh, a possible uh, response to the numbers issue is being that the Social Equity Caucus has been uh, uh, identified in statute already, utilizing the language of the working group of last fall would be uh, like session language that would allow for us to talk about those numbers differences, you know, as far as the uh, the community uh, uh, finance component, um, you know, if for some reason Ledge Council felt that we couldn't identify it exactly, you know, without getting hung up in appropriations, because that's the other piece, you know, too. Uh, some of this is clearly strategy. Uh, but as long as the understandings are there and the total number is there and you have the discretion and we have an agreement what that expected discretion may be. Um, there's a lot of trust, but hey, maybe we should shift that paradigm too. <laughs> so um, just my thought. Thank you. I. Let me wait for a moment. Rebecca. I just wanted to be clear. Um, what what other tweaks besides making clear that we want to make sure that the per diem reflects the maximum uh, possible and appropriate to compensate um, our, our BIPOC community members uh, who are going to be doing some incredible work on this and should be compensated uh, accordingly? Uh, so I, for what it's worth, I also 
Uh, thank you, Sheila, for, for pushing that issue front and center tonight. And, and I want to make sure that um, my strong support for that is reflected here. But besides that tweaking, uh, David, what are the other pieces you're pulling from tonight's meeting that you think needs to, that where we need to adjust the current draft? Oh, so far the only thing that I've noted is that. Okay, I, I just wanted so to clarify. Mostly, from. most of the concerns were actually, I think, answered by people who noted that it was contained in the language already. So I'm not seeing much else. And on that piece, the only thing I'm I'm noting is just 32 VSA 1010. If that's in there, the maximum is 50 bucks under under statute. So that has to come out and it has to be replaced. But that's again, I don't think something we need to hash out in this group. We know that we need to do that. I think the legislators and the ledge council can take care of it. Okay. It's just important that that be noted, that that needs to be taken care of. And that Definitely. it just doesn't, yeah. Um, I would say also those things I had mentioned that um, on page two, line five, taking out the National Center on Restorative Justice and simply putting in Professors Crocker and Sand. That has to be there. Um, I guess that's it that I had. Um, Sheila. Well, well, there, there oh. was, there, I'm sorry. Um, we were in the original draft. Um, yes. Before this draft. Yes. And before the other one. Um, I had put names because I had spoken to right just about everybody and so I named names and it was ledge council that said we needed to use organizations versus names you know and I think that that was you know you know the piece um so I you know it okay. we can figure out how to how to get around that if there's a concern around the using there is so there is we have to do something about that okay um just but, but so i'll just maybe, note that right so martin and i can talk to uh eric about how we can address that because you know he's he's the one that's got to make that work you know for the green books or okay. the session law book all right thank you um representative uh, yeah, I just wanted to, there was one other uh, suggestion that I had made because of a couple of the uh, concerns that folks had with uh, on the first page lines, the lines 19, 2021, uh, the how the Bureau should conduct analysis and then the methods of, for the Bureau to enforce that uh, we could, you know, those first three items, uh, the report shall address and then we could have these other two items that the report may address, and that gives a little flexibility uh, to our DAP uh, on whether they want to address it or if you simply run out of time. It gives you an escape hatch, at least for those two items. So uh, if folks are fine with that, that would be another change that I'm gonna have our legislative council do. Great. And David, if you would note that, please. Sheila. Uh, Oh, Can I just, I apologize, Sheila. I just apologize because I looked on the agenda that we we have this up to for, have further discussion on Thursday morning. Just FYI, I just wanted to flag that for y'all. Okay. Uh, and David's just been kicked out. I, but. I just got back in, but I managed, I missed just as Martin was saying what needed to be changed. I dropped off. So, uh, Martin, if you could just email me that correction that would be very helpful will do okay now sheila <laughs> who's been patient <laughs> thanks hey todd um can we just take out the language about the intern um I, I just don't think it's necessary to be in there and i'm not quite sure why and if i don't know if it's nepotism or if that's just the the natural flow or what people use or do but um somebody said earlier there's not a reason for the language to really be in there so could we take that out as well uh actually not Okay, well, I'm glad I'm asking. Can you explain? No, 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 okay. I'll, I'll explain why, okay. Um, we were really fortunate uh, over the last 
six months uh, to be part of an experiment. And that experiment was working with UVM and Middlebury specifically uh, with student interns and student intern uh, supports. As you know, we are a citizen legislature. So all of the work that you see happening, you know, in front of the scenes and behind the scenes are done by us personally. So what limited supports that we get, unless you're a committee chair and have a committee assistant working, you know, basically for you, you know, everything else you do on your own. So we've been working on this intern program. And as a result, it's amplified the amount of work we've been able to do for Vermonters. The purpose of utilizing the term, the UVM intern program specifically, was embedding that in statute so that it becomes a reference point for the legislature as it continues to do projects, especially during the summer, to be able to get students involved in the legislative process. Uh, and so that it's not a hidden meeting. It, it's pretty intentional. And, and that's that's what I meant, Sheila. It wasn't uh, to be rude. If, it, uh, if I, I can't, I, I won't, I, I'll put it this way. I won't take your time to get into some of the accomplishments that these young people have brought to the table, but <laughs> I, I am just so proud and impressed of their work that they can and will be of assistance to this project. Uh, and that was the other reason for, you know, listing it, uh, because they, you know, they'll be there for you. Can I just um, say one comment with regards to that? I think that's great, and I'm so happy that you had and have been having such a great positive experience. I'm wondering for this group specifically and with our task, I, I look at things a little bit more acutely focused. And so though I think that's great, I sort of wonder specifically what the racial makeup was of those youth and those students that we're talking about. Because while I agree with you that I think that is wonderful and great, disproportionately we do not see youth of color in those positions, at least from what I've seen. And so I, I can't speak to that because I don't know who you've had, but if that is the case and we're going to represent them in legislation, which becomes that thing that you mentioned, then I would hope that this group or we're finding efforts for this group to make sure that both um, communities of color or youth of color, as well as if we're talking about the social equity committee of other people, the LGBTQ, queer community, trans community, um, disability, et cetera, that those youth are being able to have the opportunities to be in those positions of leadership, as well as um, what I've seen as our typical white sort of middle class youth. So I, I'll uh, to answer part of the question. Uh, the uh, the student who is acting as the assistant to the director of the program for UVM uh, happens to be a young woman of color, uh, and she's the only standing uh, intern, let's say, that um, will be continuing to work, you know, with us and the program uh, into the summer. Now, to ensure um, that for this particular project, you know, we can add additional language you know, to that, you know, to ensure that uh, in the selection, you know, that preference be given, you know, to um, our BIPOC and disenfranchised Vermonter uh, community, you know, and that's, you know, it's very similar to what, you know, we've been doing with, you know, the SEC. Uh, and, you know, that's just 
keep continuing to shift the paradigm. Rebecca? So, oh, sorry. Oh, did you, you? Did, did Sheila freeze? Oh, okay. I think, I think we have a freeze. No, I didn't freeze. I'm trying to eat some pie at the same oh, time. Oh, okay. That's, oh, that's, I, know, I, I saw the <laughs> earphones and stuff and I'm going, wait a minute. Thank I, you. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. And, and we'll, uh, Martin and I will make sure that, uh, you know, that piece is covered. Rebecca. Thanks, Aton. Two comments. I wanted to uh, respond to the suggestion that on page one, lines 19, 20, uh, options four and five effectively be turned into an optional uh, optional project for the working group to work on this this session. And for what it's worth, I I think that I think that I want to make sure that that. The concerns that I heard earlier tonight don't remove options four and five from being required in our report, because I actually think that is the value added that this working group provides to the legislature. Um, the complicated hard work rubber hits the road uh, recommendations. And so, in fact, I think we already, as a panel, brought forward our recommendations for one. Um, we, you know, Pepper collected all of our, our suggestions on, on where it should go, right? Two and three are very close to what we've already produced in our report. Uh, to some sense, it's really four and five, and which is why we have the, um, the list of experts there identified that is the value added. So I would really, really recommend against turning that into an optional language, keeping the language in 12 and 13 shall. And if the issues, what I'm here heard from Monica and Evan, it was wordsmithing and understanding. Are we talking about collection in the sense that it's collecting the data? Is this a data lake? To me, that's different and can be reconciled with handling how to handle that word collection in 1920, but otherwise to keep that shall. I think it's critically important, actually that this state mandatory. Otherwise, uh, I think that this, uh, you know, summer hits, we could, and I, I know, I mean, I'm, it's hard work ahead of us if this passes. This is the fastest way for us to not, we, we say it's optional and we don't do it. Um, so I, I strongly recommend against it. The second comment um, is, is uh, that this certainly reflects where we were a week ago. But there are two pieces I just realized not included in here, and that was uh, we talked about adding, um, changing the panel makeup by including uh, Susanna Davis or her position to the panel, um, the racial equities director, and adding community members to that panel. So I just wondered where uh, that, why, why that hasn't um, come forward in this draft. I was wondering, I thought that would be more, that's what would happen if, in fact, it, after the working group does its work and whatever H317 becomes next session, that's when that would go into effect. I had understood that we could benefit from Susanna Davis even this summer and fall and, and these additional perspectives from community members and speaking to what Sheila just talked about in terms of concerns on making sure that we have that critical perspective at all points of our, our, of our work this summer. I think it is really, uh, that was what I understood last, last week, but I don't know if things have changed since then, but I certainly would continue to support the addition of that and change in the panel makeup. So I, uh, if I, if I may, a quick question, uh, and this would be a question of affirmation or ratification uh, as as you get to the point of decisions uh, for RDAP. Uh, if, because we shifted to the working group, we weren't looking at the full implementation of 317. Right. Uh, part of 317 uh, did have uh, expanding RDAP by two, uh, which would be selected by the addition of 
the racial equity executive director or designee, which was missing because the, pro the, the position didn't exist when you guys started, you know, and that, that was just the anomaly. So we're correcting that anomaly by doing that, but also increasing the size of RDAP by two to include more, you know, community members, but hopefully even more so uh, the special pops with special skills, you know, looking for uh, there's some community members of the BIPOC community that are like rock stars in data. And it would be cool if that one or two of them were appointees of the ED uh, to your committee for any number of different reasons, not just this particular piece, but uh, just in general. Uh, so what we can do is, and, and I can talk to Ledge Council about this, and um, and Martin, I I think I thought we had a discussion during the the talk about the bill that we could add another sub piece in the miscellaneous bill to include that section so that they're separate. I think know. that was the plan. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, just trying to keep you know a lot of balls juggling in the air, and I but I thought that was what the plan was. So. Monica. Mm, thanks, Eitan. I just um, wanted to respond since Rebecca made a few statements on four and five. Um, first, I just want to say that I do agree that the, the, this bill is totally going in the direction we wanted to go in. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm being sort of nitpicky, but I'm, I think I'm doing it in a way to be helpful to us as we go through our work. Um, because I think, you know, we're going to establish the bureau, figure out how it would be staffed, establish its mission. I think getting into the details about how it operates in terms of how it conducts data collection and analysis is probably better left for actually the people who are going to be hired to actually do that work. I think what we can do is, is talk about this idea of the lake or the repository or come up with another metaphor as to sort of how that should all work at a larger structural level so that the Bureau, in fact, does have data that it needs to do the work. That's the, it's subtle in my you know, my mind, but I think there is a distinction there. Um, and I feel like if we didn't clear it up now, we may end up getting caught in the weeds as we start to do our work over the summer. Um, but it's not anything that I'm gonna, you know, hold up, hold up the discussion with. I just wanted to kind of make that point. Well, it's being noted. I mean, David's yeah. writing stuff down. My suspicion of what is going to happen here is that this is going to, David's going to produce a document, get it to me, I, I mean, or himself send it out to everybody. We'll get comment on it. It's going to be another electronic ballot. And the time, turnaround on this, and I'm just going to say it now, folks, is going to be lightning fast. <laughs> lightning fast and there'll be drop dead moments like there was with the report in December. Like if I don't hear back from you by X and I don't mean X plus one minute, we're out, you're out. Um, it's gonna be really, really quick. I Again, I don't think we have to necessarily vote on it now because there've been some things suggested. It needs to go back to um, Representative Christie. It needs to and Representative Lalonde and then get it. I mean, we can have one round here, but this is ASAP. There's no time for a lot of, on this at this point. Um, I'm just putting that out there. So no, Monica, it's not being ignored. It's just there's a list here that David's compiling. Anyone else? Karen. I'm coming slowly. Um, just to make a point, I don't know if folks saw it in the chat, but Loretta looked and, and just made a comment that the act has an effective date of July 1st, 2022, instead of 2021. So I just wanted to make sure to ah. state the obvious that we got that taken care of. 
Well, now that's important, isn't it? <laughs> it might be helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Loretta. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Loretta. Evan. Just a question. Evan, you're silent. My apologies. Just a question about next steps following up on, on your last comment, Eitan. Um, so is the, uh, is the idea that, that David would put together like a, like a different version of the bill or just like a document that has our recommendations for the legislature to consider in incorporating in, into the bill? That's what I'm perceiving is that it'll be a dot of things that we ask to be put in. Yeah, my, my plan here is just to do the minutes, have the minutes hopefully accurately reflect the discussion and some of which there's some there's some clear change points and then there's others where I think uh, there's discussion and the legislators will have to decide how to incorporate that. Because we don't have control over that really. Sheila. For clarification, we are talking about the three pager and not the longer bill, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. Yeah. No, we're nowhere near the longer bill. Well, so the reason why I say that is, is because me processing I had a lot of comments and, and questions around 317, which may be applicable in this conversation, but I'm trying to sit back and see if my um, questions are answered and so that's why I'm just clarifying the only thing that we are being directed to do the fast vote on is this three pager amendment to what we were doing okay Thank correct you. because that's that's got to go in like now or close to now any other commentary on this David could you go through everything you have so far please for us so that everyone has a sense of where we're at and can make other comments if they need to sure so um i'm gonna start if i can you know it's it's still pretty rough here so i'm gonna am i admit my notes fine. so i'm gonna start by trying to pick out the things that i think were clear which i actually don't think there's a huge amount where it's like this is the definitive decision point but it's very clear that we want to um not use the 32 vsa 1010 limits so the, the 50 dollar per dm limits so that that we're clear on that martin had a suggestion which i will get from him and is also recorded by orca media um <laughs> so i can check that too later um and then a couple other issues where I think we're still figuring it out, or there's some technical stuff. National Center of Restorative Justice, replacing that with the names. Uh, Coach will work with Ledge Council to figure that out. That's doable. Um, and we had a discussion about the intern language, but my sense of the end of that discussion, the discussion's noted, but I'm not noting an action item because my sense of the end of that was that, or no, I sorry, I kept reading. The end of that is that coach is going to um, go back and think about ways to make the diversity point clearer, but potentially make the diversity point clearer in the language of the bill regarding the intern um, cohort. Um, and then there was a bit of, I don't think there was any decision on this, but there was discussion regarding four and five on page one, options four and five on page one. Uh, Rebecca making the point that this is very important. It's a real value add that we can bring. Monica making uh, the point that agrees with the direction of the bill, but that the technical processes that four and five are arguably referring to are um, things that are really technical data issues as opposed to big picture uh, bureau construction issues. And so I leave that, I'm not putting any action item on that discussion, just noting it, that there was a back and forth there. Clear action item is changing the effective date, um, but we can, I think, trust Ledge Council to get that one right. Um, 
and that's what I have. Okay. Let me just check in with Chief Stevens. You raised a couple points earlier. Are those addressed for you? Chief? Uh, yeah, my, uh, it takes a minute for the mute button to come off. So I just want to <laughs> say it, sound, it sounds like um, based on what was said, I, I believe it is because there was a section pointed to. So um, I don't think we have to deal with the authority issue um, if it's been addressed. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. uh, they. Um, I, I think the legislator pointed to the the section that dealt with that, and I'm satisfied that it's been addressed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um. That is all that I can remember. Does anyone have other things that they need to have addressed? Oh, wait, one thing, David. Um, and I'm not sure. Monica has ra raised the point line 11, page one, about collect. And there was some discussion about language around collect. Yeah, I have that in my notes. Sorry, I didn't you pull do. that okay. one out. But uh, okay. that is in there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Tyler. I would just say for, at least in my mind, for clarity's sake, uh, several of the things you mentioned were all combined. So the part David missed about Representative Lalonde's um, suggestion was what um, later Rebecca and Monica were talking about number four and five. So those weren't distinct things. And I think the okay. collection that Monica originally, that was, it's kind of built all into that same, same question. So that's, that's, that's still, that's probably one of the bigger things all wrapped up together. Okay. Sorry, okay. maybe that didn't help. No, it's okay. I, just... I put it differently. That's all. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. I, yeah, I take the point, I think, hopefully, that um, Martin's suggestion is really could be taken as part of that discussion between Monica and Rebecca, and that's going to be a decision point for legislators to make ultimately. David, you put that so much better than I did. Sorry for my bumbling. It's late. <laughs> no, just making sure I got it. Thanks. The next step then is, Coach, do you see that you need to, what do you see? Do you, that you need to take this back to Ledge Council with the suggestions from us? Do we need to do that again? Uh, what makes sense to you? The critical issues, I think, um, can be reasonably uh, addressed. Um, with a conversation with Ledge Council. So um, what I would suggest is, is that uh, Martin and I uh, meet with Eric uh, with uh, David's notes and push those pieces in. Okay. Will you be able to get a draft of this back to me after that step? Oh yeah. Okay, then I will then get that out to everyone to look at finally with an electronic ballot to vote for or against or abstain. <laughs> um, and that, as I say, will be rather quick because as uh, Coach said, everything is shutting down on the 22nd. Does that seem reasonable, Coach? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully, e even if it becomes a straw vote of some sort, um, you know, just thinking of, you know, like, you know, how, how, how intense the calendar is right now, just yes. the legislative calendar and getting it through both bodies. Um, the Senate is ready um, to deal with the miscellaneous bill. Uh, the questions become, you know, those uh, around having to make any uh, pit stops at other committees. So we're trying to keep that to a minimum. So 
but but that's you know that's our uh, piece of headache at the moment. But okay. we can try to pull that together. Okay, Chief Stevens. There we go. Um, <laughs> well, I guess my my question would be, um, since there's such a fast turnaround time, and you, we only have one shot at looking at it, and there won't be any changes made because there won't be any time. It sounds like everybody agrees that this bill is what they want in 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 the meat of it. So, do you think it be prudent to say? We, we adopt this, uh, you know, as is, and they will take it under consideration. And then, <clears throat> because you're getting into the minute details that you're not going to be able to even, what happens if somebody says no? Are they going to change it? Are they going to have time to change it? So my question is, what does the vote do that, that would allow us um, time to do anything with the bill outside of just looking at it and say, yeah, go ahead. So my, my well, point, would it, well, that's my point. So I guess, should we, if we agree that this is the, the next step and this is the way we want the, the, the bill, at least make a motion to say, we support this bill moving forward and that the details can be, you know, uh, however you want to word the details saying it's for informational purposes or this is what we would like. So we don't have to go back Forth because even if somebody says no, we're not they're not gonna change it because we don't have time. So, what so a lovely motion. Huh? I'm asking what the question. A lovely to the motion. Well, I'm asking the question to the group. Does it make sense to just give a give that authority now so that way coach can put whatever he needs into the bill, send it back to us for informational purposes only, um, and then go forward. I, I'm just asking the question. To the group, I'd like to make I think that, that sounds motion. Great. I'd like to make that a motion. Anyone seconding it? Um, what? Well, can we actually? What is the the how? <laughs> what's the said. motion? I mean, I I'm, I'm looking at coach to say what what does he need from us that would give them the legislators the assurance that that we're on board with this and that he's going to do the tweaking and that we're just going to be supporting from a informational standpoint you know like the changes or whatever may i please I make think. a suggestion sure yeah, please, somebody um you know uh uh david was perhaps slightly more articulate than he gave himself credit for when he was reading off his notes but it as he mentioned it was a fairly succinct uh list yeah. of recommendations that we had for improving this proposal so perhaps um an efficient way to do this would be for him to uh, maybe read them really quickly and then i would be happy to make a motion that uh rdap endorse this version of um of the proposed bill subject to the changes listed by david share and then maybe we would be able to have a second and a vote on that but at least that way it would be memorialized i i don't know if i would just to evan i wouldn't know if i would say subject to because then if coach can't put something in that's not exactly what if they don't put everything that we've suggested in there then if you're saying we approve it only if these are put in uh, then, then if they don't, then, then what, right? Do we say, does that mean we don't approve it? So, I, well, I think it means that we're, I think either way, we're stuck with whatever the legislature tells us to do because they created us and they, they're our sort of bosses. So well, how about we just say humbly that we would prefer these, uh, these changes. Yeah, I would say make a motion. My personal thing is to make a motion to accept the bill as it has been stated but recommend the following changes um, to be included if possible or whatever the language might be. That sounds lovely. David, would you please read everything succinctly as Evan has asked? I will try. The, so again, 
there's a couple categories here. There's the clear changes. So I'm going to list the clear changes only to start, and then we'll go from there. Um, the clearest change is around the per diems. I think we're all in agreement there. Um, and then we have the a couple of issues where it's going to be like technical, but they're going to inquire about it, which is the names versus the National Center of Sort of Justice reference. And um, uh, I think that was that was the big one there. And then there's a couple of broader discussions, which I think are not really. They are things that the legislators are going to have to judge because we are in, in agreement at this point, but we can note them, which is just that there's the shall versus may issue regarding uh, some of the options and the Monica, Rebecca, Martin Lalonde discussion, which I will concisely refer to just that way. Um, and the final piece that I have on here that I'm remembering is the intern piece and uh, making reference to uh, adequate diversity in that cohort. Great. So, Aton, with that being yes. said, I would like to make a motion that we accept the amendment as it was presented to us with, su with suggested changes that can be considered by the legislators that David has just outlined. Thank you. Does anyone want to second the motion? I'll second it. Thank you, Evan. Now I'm going to ask as we vote that the members, because there's a lot of people here who are not actually on the panel, I'm going to ask that members of the panel vote both with their voice and with raising their hands like you want to talk and just leave it up all right it's gonna be a little slow here but both voice so you can hear yourselves and then i can also make sure that it's just members of the panel who are voting um by rate with raising your hand so all in favor Aye. 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 And I'm just tabulating here. Okay. Thank you. Give me a moment. I have to lower your hands now. Okay, now, all opposed? You still have hands up, um, oh, just, you know. There yeah, is I see. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm getting there. All opposed? Thank you. All abstentions? Thank you. Motion is carried. David, we look forward to getting those uh, that list from you. Thank you all. Kyla, you're smiling. What's up? That always feels good to get something done. Ah, yes, there <laughs> is that. Yes. <laughs> um, I think given Thank you, everyone, first off. I, I'm like losing my threads of thought here. Um, I'm going to just sort of executively say that I think <laughs> we're kind of done with discussing this right now. I think that the first item, which is actually the second item, the discussion of the whole thing, which Sheila had talked about before, there's no point in bringing that up now. We have 12 minutes left. Um, so let's just table that. Obviously, we're going to be doing that a lot. Um, does anyone have anything new that they need to bring up at this point? 
No. Okay. Our next meeting, as far as we know, is the 8th of June of 2021. Um, I'd like to thank both Coach and Martin Lalonde for their, their work on this. Um, that report took a lot last year, and it is indeed gratifying to see it turn into something that can be of use to the state and to its residents. And so thank you very much for all that you've done with the RDAP. Thank everybody on the RDAP. I don't say that enough, um, but I mean it. Um, thank you all for all of the work that you do and will continue to do. Um, our next meeting again, 8th of June. And I think we're just going to adjourn. We don't even need a vote on this one. I think everyone's toast. Um, and I will see you all in June. You know how to find me. Go and be fruitful. Have a great night. Have a nice everyone. Day, Thanks, Aton. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, all. Take care, coach. Thank you.